Peleg, or in his days was the earth divided. On page six of my book, in the top right of the page, you will find this excerpt, Deuteronomy 32, from the Septuagint. When the Most High divided the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the nations according to the number of the angels of God. And we know today that the Septuagint preserves the correct reading here. We know because in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it reads sons of God here. And this is how the translators of the Septuagint would translate that, the angels of God. This passage Dr. Heiser found this passage very intriguing. Very intriguing, and it was one of the passages that really got his curiosity going in this area. And there's another passage, and he talked about this in various interviews and stuff, the, the passage above, and this other one, Psalm 82. I have the Septuagint version here. God stands in the assembly of gods, and in the midst of them will judge gods. How long will ye judge unrighteously and accept the persons of sinners? Pause. Judge the orphan and poor. Do justice to the low and needy. Rescue the needy and deliver the poor out of the hand of the sinner. They know not nor understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth shall be shaken. I have said ye are gods and all of you children of the Most High. But ye die as men, and fall as one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Once again, the use of Elohim In the Hebrew, the use of Elohim caught Dr. Heiser's attention. And it's what started him into researching this subject of the gods of the nations. Here's the thing, though. Some people looking into this will say, yes, these are interesting passages. But I need more than this. I need more. I need additional scriptural justification like this. If such a stupendous notion as this were true, we should find it more in scripture. That's how a lot of people feel. And there is more in scripture. And it has to do with this, this interesting guy named Peleg
And there's a couple reasons the priests zeroed in on Peleg to tell us about the Tower of Babel. It's the time when it happened. His name describes what happened to a certain extent. But there's another reason Peleg is a really important guy. It opens a door into all kinds of evidence for what I'm talking about, what Dr. Heiser was talking about, what the Jews, what the ancient Jews saw in their text, what they were talking about. So on page six of my book, you'll see this note in the bottom center, okay? Now, I brought the tower narrative down to its end. I included this Toledote, and that left me some space down here to put this very important note in. What you need to understand, this verse 18, this is part of the genealogy that begins here in 10, and it runs on down. I kind of skip ahead to verse 18 here in this note area because it's so important. And first of all, let me say something about Peleg. His name, Peleg. Some people have trouble understanding why his name refers to the division at the Tower of Babel because his name isn't the same Hebrew word that's used in those passages. So people have wondered about that, like why Peleg? And the reason, we're actually lucky the priests point us to this in chapter 10, verse 25. They pinpoint Peleg in his time was the Eretz divided. There's several reasons they do, but his name does mean a channel of water which divides plots of land, a channel or a canal this in turn derives from the root that just means divide. And you can see it used in this instance here. Psalm 55, 19, destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. So here you see the root utilized in a passage. His name, same as 6388, okay? So his name really means a canal or a channel or a ditch. But the idea is that it would divide plots of land. But here's the thing. So this is, okay. So that's the meaning of Peleg. That's one thing I wanted to point out here. It's not the most important thing, though. Peleg lived 30 years and begat Ru. Now, this is important to know because, like the priests say, Peleg, for in his day, was the heir it's divided. So, in order to pinpoint Peleg and not anyone after Peleg, that means the tower episode occurred within this time frame right here. And that's this 30 years here is when the Tower of Babel incident would have occurred sometime in here. Now, here's what's really important Peleg 
had a son and named him Ru. This name means friend. I'll return to that in a moment. If you look in further detail though, in the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon, this name is the proper name of a god. <gasps> this is the proper name of a pagan deity. Okay, now, why did Peleg, following the tower episode, when he had a son, why did he name him Ru? Why did he name him after the name of a god? If you understand what happened at the tower, then you know the answer to that. Okay. So Ru friend like Ruel Jethro who was a priest if you look into this Ru it means a friend of the shepherd or a friend of the pasture deity So Peleg's son was a priest of the gods. Note, the ancient Hebrews were not unaware of the fact Peleg named his son after a demon, nor that other such Theophoric names occur within their own sacred text. Thus, their doctrine concerning the gods of the nations truly permeates the whole Tanakh and is not solely derived from Deuteronomy 32.8. In the Dictionary of Deities and Demons, we find this entry, Ram. Ram has been speculated to be the name of a deity on the basis of the name Abram, interpreted theophorically as Ram his father. Now this may or may not be the case, but when you understand the Tower of Babel and what happened there, and just what's going on here, then you shouldn't be surprised to find this. You shouldn't be surprised to find Melchizedek and other such occurrences in the Bible. Here's an excerpt from Moore's critical commentary on Judges page 946. The reality and power of the national god of Moab were no more doubted by the old Israelites than those of Yahweh himself. A conspicuous illustration of this is 2 Kings 327, where a signal disaster of the Israelite arms before the capital of Moab is attributed to the fury of Shamash, excited by the sacrifice of the king's son. And you can find this and other important information in this area here this is page six in my free book, 
download it for free at the link below. Seven pages with a three page index, ten pages all together. Download them all, it's free, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it.